Hello friends. This is a home automation project to control the multiple rooms of your home. You can use the manual switches to control the home appliances. And the real-time status of the relays will also be updated on the Android app. You can also use the Android app to control the load connected to each relay. You can control up to 4 rooms using this app. To control the room number 2, you just tap on room 2 button. Now, you can control the home appliances of room number 2 using Android app. And you can also use the manual switches to control the load connected to the relays. Also, check the real-time status update in the Android app. Next, if you reset the microcontroller or if there is a power failure. And when the microcontroller power up again, the latest status of the relays will be updated automatically. Next, I have used ESP8266 for room number 1 and ESP32 for room number 2. And these both devices are connected to the Firebase real-time database. You can use two more ESP devices for room number 3 and room number 4. You can connect up to 200,000 devices to the Firebase at the same time. The interesting thing of this project is You can upload same sketch on ESP32 and ESP8266 without making any change in the code. So, you can use any device you have in this project. I have used Firebase database for this project. So, you can control your home appliances from anywhere in the world. This project consumes very little amount of Firebase data. So, the free quota of Firebase data usage will never exceeded. So, you don't have to worry about hitting the quota limit of Firebase database. For this project, first, we need to set up a Firebase project. So, go to Firebase and sign in using your Google account. Here click on Get Started. And then, add project to create a new project. Then give a name to your project. You can give any name to your project. And then click on Continue. Again click the continue button. Next, select the default account for Firebase and then click on create project button. The project is ready. Just click on continue. Here, first we will create a real time database. So, click on real time database. Then click on create database. Here, select the location for your database server. You must select a location that is near to your country. Then click on next. Then select start in test mode. After that, click on enable button. Now the database is ready. Next, we have to set the read and write permissions. To do so, go to the rules tab. Here, change the permissions to true. Our project will use these permissions to access the Firebase database. Then click on publish button to publish the rules. Next, you need to set authentication method for your project. So, from the left panel, click on authentication. The authentication is required because it allows our project to securely save the data in the Firebase Cloud database. Here, click on get started. Here you can see There are several authentication methods like email and password, Google account, Facebook account and others. For testing purpose, you can select the anonymous user. This method does not require any username and password for authentication. Enable this option and then click on save button. Next, you will need to get the project API key. So, from the left panel, click on project settings. Here you can see the web API key. Just copy it and save it in some text editor software like Notepad. This web API key will be used later in the code and also used in the Android app. Next, you will need to get the Firebase host URL. So, from the left panel, click on Real Time Database. Here you can see the Firebase host URL. Just copy it by clicking on this button. Then again go to the notepad and paste the URL here. We will use this data later. Next, 
You can download the code from my GitHub account. I have put the download link in the description of the video. Here is the downloaded folder. You can see Arduino sketch file, wiring diagram, and big automation.aia file. This file will be used to make the Android app. Next, we will create an Android app using MIT App Inventor. You can log in to App Inventor using your Gmail account. Now, first we will import the AIA file that we have already downloaded. So, click on Project. And then click on Import Project from my computer. Then click on Choose File. Now, browse to the code folder that we have downloaded before. Here, open the bigautomation.aia file. And then click on OK. Now the project is imported. Here you can see the project, Big Automation. Just open it. Here I have create four screens. Screen 1 is used to control the room number 1. Similarly, screen 2 for room 2. Screen 3 for room 3 and so on. You can also add more screens as per your requirements. Each screen is connected to the buttons below. You can use these buttons to control the load for each room separately. Next, we will enter the Firebase credentials in this project. We have already saved them in the notepad. Here, first copy the web API key. And then go to the App Inventor. Here, select Firebase DB1. And then paste the API key in the Firebase token field. Next, go back to the notepad. And copy the Firebase host URL. Then go back and paste the URL here in the Firebase URL field. Make sure you must delete all the data from the project bucket field. Now the screen one is ready. You must repeat the same process for the other screens like room 2, room 3, and room 4. Make sure you must have entered the Firebase host URL and web API key in all the screens. You must enter the same data in all the screens that we have entered in screen 1. Otherwise the app will not work. As you can see, I have made all the required changes. So now, the project is ready. Let's have a look at code blocks. Here are the code blocks. The same code blocks are used in all the screen. The code is very simple and straightforward. If you feel any issue, then tell me in the comments. Next, we will create the Android APK file. So, click on Build. And then select Android App.APK file. Soon, the project building process will start. Now the APK file is ready. Click on Download button to download the file on your computer. Now we have Android App APK file and we will install it in the phone. So, just move this file to your Android phone and then install it. After installing the app, it looks something like this. Now we will test this app. So, select the room 1 and press the light 1 button. Now, observe the Firebase database. Here, you can see the data as updated for light 1 of room number 1. Similarly, you can test the other buttons to see if they are working or not. Next, select the room number 2 and then test all the buttons here. Before going forward, make sure all the buttons are must working properly. Next, let's have a look at the wiring diagram. Here, I have connected the four push buttons to D5, D6, SD2 and SD3 pins of node MCU board. The relay module is connected to the pin D0, D1, D2 and pin D3 of node MCU microcontroller. I have powered up the whole project using 5 volts wall watt power supply. I have connected the VCC pin of power supply to V in pin of node MCU board and to the VCC pin of relay module. Next. Here I have already connected all the components as per wiring diagram. Now, the first device is ready and we will use it for room number 1. Similarly, prepare three more node MCUs for room 2, room 3 and room number 4. Next, if you want to use ESP32 microcontroller 
then you must follow this wiring diagram. Here, I have connected the 8 channel relay module to ESP32, because, I don't have another 4 channel relay module. You might use 4 channel relay module with ESP32. Now, the hardware setup is complete. Next, let's move to the coding part of the project. From the code folder, open this file MIT Multiroom Firebase.ino file. Here, first you need to install the board packages for ESP32 and ESP8266 by using these links in the preferences. I have installed the latest version both for ESP32 and ESP8266 devices. For ESP8266, I have installed the version 3.0.2. And for ESP32, I have installed the version 1.0.6. Next. You also need to install ESP Firebase client library. This library is required to work with the Firebase real-time database. You can install it from the library manager. Here is the library, Firebase Arduino client library. I have installed the version 3.1.5. Next below, you need to enter your Wi-Fi router's SSID and password. Next. Here you need to enter the Firebase Web API key. We have already stored it in the notepad. So, just copy the Web API key. Then go back, and paste the Web API key here. Next, enter the Firebase host URL here. So, just copy it from the notepad. Then go back, and paste the Firebase URL here. Make sure, just remove the trailing slash from the end. Also delete the HTTPS part from the beginning of the URL. Next below. Here you need to add the room number for your ESP device. I am configuring this code for room number 1, so I will not change this value. Now, the code is ready. Just select your ESP8266 board, from the tools menu. My board is node MCU 1.0. And here you can see the configurations of my board. Now, just hit upload button to upload the code. After uploading the code, open serial monitor. Here, first the project will connect to the Wi-Fi router. And then, it will sign up for the Firebase database as an anonymous user. And then project will fetch the latest data from the room 1 bucket of the Firebase database. And then it updates the relay states according to the incoming data. If I press the push button, then the relay will turn on. And the relay status will be updated in the Firebase database. Similarly, you can test other buttons as well. Next, for room number 2, we will upload the same code on ESP32 as well. So, just change room number and set it to room 2. Next, you will have to define the pins for your ESP32 board as per wiring diagram. I have already stored the pin definitions in this modify sketch.txt file. So, just copy the pin definitions for ESP32. Then go back to sketch file and paste the pin definitions here. Now the sketch is ready. Next, select your ESP32 device from the tools menu. I will select the board as ESP32 development module. Next, select the COM port for your ESP32 board. Now, just click on upload button to upload the code. This way you can prepare two more devices for room number 3 and 4. The final setup of my project is look something like this. And you can control anything by using manual switches as well as using the Android app. That's all. This is for today. If you have any question, then comment me in the comment box below. See you in another video. Bye.